All right, we're good. Okay, cool. So I guess I'll just open. We're reading here. I'm going to butcher this name. Kai Nielsen and a further critique of the divine command theory. So Ella, we've obviously met. Um, what did you think of the article? I definitely thought that it was a lot more easy to comprehend than divine command theory, just because like for me, who's not a very religious person, I have a hard time putting like all my faith into God and believing that he determines everything that is good or like just that whole concept. This like definitely um, shows that we kind of decide what we think is good and bad. What about you? Um, I definitely thought it was much easier to understand, but I didn't really see any value in the synthetic and analytic point of the argument. I can understand it as like a precursor for what was to come, but I think all the parts after that regarding um, logically prior and temp temporally prior, I think that helped establish it a lot better. But I still think that's very much confusing and we'll tackle that like a little bit later. But, but do you think that Nielsen's argument adutes the external, um, adequately refutes divine command theory? Yes, just because like, it, I feel like it just kind of takes the divine command theory and shows you that you can still use it but at the same time, it just adds to it that there's other options outside of God, you know, to determine yeah, what's exactly. good and bad. I think it just made it just made way more sense. Like this right. clicks with like my ideals and my beliefs. It just makes way more sense. Yeah, I think just for the general population, it's a lot easier to fathom that there's sources outside of God that can tell you what's good versus bad. 100%. So we will move on to the first question. Okay, so, so this one's mine. Yep. Do you want to read it? What does the logically prior and temporally prior have to do with what is determined good or bad? So I'll be tackling this question. Um, so I, I want to first, I want to start by establishing the fact that Nielsen believes in the external standard of goodness. He does not agree with divine command theory. And I think that's really important going forward. So I think a good place to start would be to define logically prior and temporally prior. So the logically prior is similar to cause and effect in that something must happen or exist before something else can happen to connect to the example from the reading your parents have to be married in order to get a divorce. Like the definition of divorce would probably involve the word married. Like divorce is when a couple who were once married are no longer together. It's very clear that divorce is dependent on marriage. Where temporally prior is subjective and relies heavily on when something was perceived by someone. So the example I like generated from the article was that Let's imagine Johnny's parents got divorced two years before he was born. Because of this, Johnny never sees his parents together, never sees them married, and he only understands divorce. So Johnny grows up and he goes to Samantha's house one day and he sees both of Samantha's parents are in the house and Johnny gets all confused because he's never seen this before. Then Samantha explains to him that they are married and that's why they're together all the time. So if we look at these examples, logically, Johnny knows now that you must, be you must first be married to get a divorce. But temporally, in Johnny's perceived timeline, he learned about divorce first and then learned about marriage from divorce. Now, this is all well and good, but I didn't also realize what this has to do with God and what makes things good or bad. The connection is kind of hard to see. So Let's hope we can explain it here. So the external standard of goodness represents logically prior. It has always been there. It exists. And God's existence relies 
on the external standard of goodness. God has faith and trust in the external standard of goodness. And because we trust God, we trust what he says from the external standard of goodness. So a nice all inclusive example here is, let's say you never took an ethics class and you in primary school and your teacher comes and tells you that God is good and you believe him because it's your teacher, right? Later in life, you learn about the external standard of goodness in an ethics class. And this is when you find out that is why and how God knows what's good. And then he tells you. It's almost like God has a cheat sheet of laws and then he like reads it and lets us know. I hope that makes sense. So subjectively in this example, subjectively and temporally, you learned about God first from your teacher and then learned about the external standard of goodness in class. So logically in this scenario, the external standard of goodness came first and then um, God. So why is this a big deal overall? This is big because it means that God relies on the external standard of goodness rather than God and the external standard of goodness running parallel to one another as Aquinas believes. Did that make sense? All right, I think Perfect. you covered that one. All right. For this question. Okay. So. Go ahead. Does Nielsen's solution, thank you. <laughs> does Nielsen's solution to the Euphoro dilemma remove God's power? So for this one, as Ray said, because God believes in the external standard, that means that he is not, really like all powerful and all knowing because he puts his beliefs and his power into the external standard law. Um, so the way this was explained was like, if A equals B, those are equal, right? But then B equals C. So therefore A must equal C. And to put this into perspective, A would be god god's beliefs god's power so that would equal the external standard right i mean c would be um us believing in the external standard because of god's belief in the external standard um so basically the faith that we put in god is equal to the faith that we should put in the um external standard external standard theory um, so like the Euthyphro dilemma, he is saying that God determines what's good and bad, but this is saying that because God believes in the external standard theory, that is what determines what's good and bad. Do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> 100. No, that makes 100% sense. I think like Aquinas likes to think that God and the external standard run side by side, where Nielsen clearly believes that God relies heavily on the external standard. And because we rely on God, we therefore also rely on the external standard. I think it makes perfect sense. At least now it does. Before, not so much. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Okay.